This is the lecture on the automation of hinterland container logistics systems. My name is Rob Zuidwijk. And we'll discuss the topic used on the following guiding questions. What does automation of hinterland container transportation really uh, mean? And what are logistic solutions uh, for fleets of uh, autonomous vehicles and vessels? To, to discuss the topic, we'll actually look at an example. We'll uh, consider uh, a mode of uh, transportation and a uh, let's say manner of automation, uh, which is already being piloted quite actively, uh, also in the port of, uh, port of Rotterdam, uh, truck platooning. This is about uh, driving trucks in convoys at a very close distance uh, to each other. Uh, and that means that the uh, actual distance in terms of time, uh, 0.3 seconds, is, is beyond the response time of a human uh, chauffeur. Uh, so the human driver cannot respond quickly enough when the first uh, truck would uh, hit the brakes. That requires the second truck, the following truck, to have an automated system in response to the behavior of the first truck, uh, also to hit the brakes, uh, for instance. Um, so this requires a certain level of automation of the trucks, uh, of the trucks involved and also some communication uh, between, uh, between the trucks. And this is indeed uh, one of the first steps toward full automation of, uh, of, uh, of trucks, uh, where maybe even the driver uh, is not uh, needed uh, anymore. So having said that trucks could drive in convoys, uh, and let me also explain why that is a good idea. If dr trucks drive in those convoys very close to each other, uh, the resistance uh, of the wind is reduced. And this uh, means that uh, eventually about 10% of the fuel can be saved. So we actually see that this truck platooning re results in uh, energy savings. Having said that, that means that you also must uh, allow those trucks to drive in convoys. So they need to find each other and drive together to a certain destination. Well, but in the beginning, each individual truck has its own route uh, to drive. And then you need to figure out whether there are routes and uh, whether there are trucks that could indeed match. And, 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 and because they have a considerable uh, stretch that they can drive together. And this matching can be done in actually two ways. You can have a scheduled uh, approach or you can have a spontaneous approach. <clears throat> in the scheduled approach, you will actually have those routes per truck available beforehand. And then you can try to figure out which routes can be uh, brought uh, together in such a way that the trucks don't need to deviate uh, a large distance and also need not wait uh, on each other. So for example, if two trucks drive a long stretch uh, uh, along a certain highway at about the same time, they could decide to, to join together into a, uh, a platoon. But if the trucks uh, drive completely different uh, routes far away from each other, there's no point in even trying to do so. And you can plan this uh, by, if you have, uh, for example, 30 trucks, try to make as much matches as you can. And you can see this as a, as a nice uh, mathematical problem, if you want, uh, to, to, to bring those trucks together. Another option is that you don't have that information available or don't uh, want to have it available and actually would like to look at the situation in a more responsive and ad hoc manner. So you just wait and see until trucks are actually on the road and those trucks themselves could even look uh, for another truck uh, to match up with. They could communicate uh, with each other, decide whether there is indeed sufficient stretch that they could join uh, in a platoon and then actually form a platoon. This spontaneous formation of platoons is quite different from what we see usually in consolidation of uh, freight, where maybe uh, containers are, are brought uh, to a, a terminal, put together uh, on a barge or rail set, uh, and that may take uh, hours, not e perhaps even days. Now we instantaneously uh, allow two trucks to join and form a uh, road train uh, and thereby consolidating their freight. Leading, leading also to some uh, savings. And this spontaneous uh, uh, behavior uh, is also stimulated by higher levels of, uh, of density on roads. If you have more trucks on the road, then the, the probability that two trucks can join together into a platoon is higher. 
And that means that as soon as you have more trucks on the road, you spontaneously will get more consolidation. So instead of trying to plan all that consolidation on a network in advance, you can actually just wait and see what happens. As long as there are enough trucks uh, on various parts of the network, you will automatically see a consolidation of uh, freight through those uh, platoons. And in that sense, we actually are creating a new hybrid modality. So we don't have trucks, we don't have trains, we have something in between. And uh, this modality will manifest itself as individual trucks when there are not too many trucks around. And it will manifest itself as trains, as road trains, as soon as density uh, grows. So that's one example of autonomous transportation and how that uh, results in some interesting observations. On the other hand, we have also uh, vessels. Uh, and also there we can uh, think of uh, automation. Now, one thing which is particular about uh, vessels is that the size of the vessel uh, could, could change. An autonomous vessel doesn't need a skipper. Uh, therefore, uh, the size of the vessel could be defined uh, differently. It could be a relative small uh, vessel. Uh, and maybe you can think about such, uh, such uh, vessels as be being part of a fleet. Perhaps even you could call that a swarm uh, that actually operates uh, in, 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 the, in the hinterland and in the port. And so those that swarm of uh, vessels uh, will uh, approach uh, terminals to offload their uh, cargo, for example, by kiss and ride type of uh, concepts. And then we need to think about how to operate such a fleet of uh, automated barges. There are all kinds of interesting technical questions, one that we will in fact uh, engage with together with the TU Delft. So to conclude, we do see that automation of uh, hinterland container transportation uh, includes uh, the automatic deployment of, uh, of, uh, of uh, trucks, of uh, autonomous driving capabilities of trucks. Uh, and this can be used when we uh, want to drive uh, trucks in uh, platoons. And we have also briefly discussed the possibility to have fleets of autonomous vehicles and vessels uh, uh, to, to, to control swarm fleets uh, in, port, uh, in port areas. Thank you very much for your attention.